Hi, today we're doing a demo of the ESP32 CAM. This particular module comes in two flavors with respect to Wi-Fi, a built-in Wi-Fi cable and an external cable. It will show the differences in just a sec. Today we're just going to demo the one with the built-in antenna. So we've got our camera right here, SD card holder, light. On the back, we have our reset button, various pinouts, but right here is where the difference is. So in the built-in antenna, I don't know if I can get in close enough, there's a resistor. And depending on which pads the resistor is on determines whether or not this is an internal or external Wi-Fi. So this is an internal Wi-Fi. Give me one sec. And we'll pull up the external Wi-Fi. What you may not be able to see is right where that antennas plugged in, the resistors are on the other set of pads. But those are the differences, but again today we're going to focus on the one using the internal. To program this, you can use any FTDI to USB programmer available. You need to make sure you do the following connections. That yellow wire is GPIO0 and it's connected to ground. I have transmit to receive, receive to transmit on this side and on the opposite side your VCC goes to 5 volt and your ground goes to ground. If you don't connect it this way when you try to upload it using the IDE you'll get that dot 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 dash 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 dot 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 saying that it really doesn't see your device and it can't upload. So you upload it this way. After the code is uploaded what you're going to do is disconnect the FTDI cable from the USB port remove the jumper here, plug it back in, and then go ahead with your sketch. So in just a second, we're going to upload a basic sketch just to test the camera function. Then we'll add the PIR and show you how they work together. So if you use the camera web server sketch from the ESP32 cam library, you want to do two things. One, change the definition to camera model AI thinker because you're using a genuine AI thinker module. The other thing is you put in your SSID credentials so it can connect to your Wi-Fi network. So we have it pinned, programmed with a simple web server sketch. Pulled the jumpers. I'm going to open the serial monitor, drag it over from my other window, hit the reset button. You can see we've been given an IP address of 192.168.1.238. We can look at the web server on port 80, which we're going to do in just a second, or you can use as a streaming server on port 81, which means you could connect it to OBS. So we're ready. We're going to first just tell it to pick up a still. Sometimes you get this character and you get this character. So the image has been taken. And I found that when you get this, you either need to restart the browser um, or re-enter the IP. This is not a function of the camera. This is a function of the browser code interacting with the camera. So in the interest of transparency and actually show you this works, uh, I took a different ESP32 cam and flashed it for the same thing. It has a different IP address of 192.168.1.235. So we're just going to pop that in there. Same screen that you see. And we're going to go ahead and click get still. And now you can see that this has got a picture of my TV in frozen mode. That's just a still photo. We're going to go ahead and start the stream. So now it's recording not really recording it's streaming now I'm gonna go ahead and start the television set with the volume on so you can see and hear 99.9% with 0% bleach now you're not hearing it through the camera because the camera doesn't have a microphone but I want you to compare the actual video how this camera captures it there's always a way to make life better 
Oh, we hate commercials. Let's just fast forward through that, shall we? Okay, so you can see that it actually captures, and that's in the 320 by 240 mode. Let's just for giggles kick it up to the 1280 by 1024. Now, if you notice, it's increased the size, and let's try it again. So you can see a noticeable lag when we increase the resolution. Let's go ahead and decrease it. Take it to the 400. So when you plug yours in, when you're setting it up, play with the resolution settings. Choose the one that's best for you. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in the PIR and make it trigger photos to be taken. Let's talk about some of those special effects. So while the stream is going, I can then do a negative effect, switch it to grayscale, red tint, green tint, blue tint, sepia tint. So a lot gets packed into this device. Anyway, now let's go ahead and plug in a PIR and test it. On the left is the ESP32 cam, on the right is the PIR, the wiring, so the program, remember we ground IO0 and ground when we're done, we pull it, hit the reset button. And I've loaded the sketch that's going to cause the LED light to go on, flash once, and write to the SD card. The camera is pointed at a cell phone that's running a clock feature so I'm going to plug this in you'll see the light turn on you'll see a flash and that would signal a picture being taken now we're going to hit reset again without moving And we'll do it one more time just so we can prayerfully capture all three images. Mm -hmm. My SD card was named Blackberry, but here are the pictures. In this example, you have to reset the ESP32 cam every time you want a picture taken. There is another way to put this in deep sleep mode. It requires we hook up a few transistors and resistors. And when we do, anytime you get motion, it will snap a picture and store it to SD card. If you're trying to use this in a spy mode, I would suggest not turning on the flash as it gives it away. Of course, the trade-off there is you don't get a low-light situation. But this is the demo of the ESP32 cam with the PIR motion sensor. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to stop by DIY Malls for all of your IoT needs.